Your book discuss, discusses consciousness. Humans experience life subjectively, you say, but we fail to explain consciousness in a physical way. You suggest that one bold idea is that there could be innate mindfulness in a particle, that a swirl of mindful particles could create a conscious mind. Where is science on that now? Yeah, well, that's a very speculative idea. It's in, I think it's an interesting one worthy of contemplating. It comes from a number of individuals, but David Chalmers, I think, is the person who's most closely associated with that. And he is a very thoughtful, insightful philosopher. I think he began life as a physicist and naturally, with that orientation, sought to understand how it could possibly be that particles as we usually describe them in physics, which they don't have inner sensations, they have qualities, electric charge and mass and quantum mechanical spin, for example, but they don't have any inner emotion, they don't have any kind of proto thought that's within them. How could you take a large collection of those inside of a brain, configure them appropriately, hook them up to a source of energy, namely the rest of the body that takes in fuel from the environment. And then how could they possibly generate thought, emotion, qualitative sensations of the external world? And so he beat his head against that problem, which he coined the term, the hard problem of consciousness that many people have struggled with. But he beat his head against the wall so hard that ultimately he said it can't be resolved. Mm. He said the only resolution is to rethink what the particles are. The particles must have some kind of little bit of inner life, a little bit of inner sensation. And somehow when they are in aggregate in the right configuration, those little bits of inner proto-consciousness hook up and yield the sense of consciousness that you and I are familiar with, but I would say that it's it's not at all a theory that science has yet embraced. To my mind, it just shows the extent to which people are willing to go to try to resolve this deep puzzle of how we have inner worlds of sight and sound and emotion. Where is the origin of those deeply human and, and deeply life-affirming sensations? <laughs>